a.m. press briefing for today in regards to the Buffalo blizzard. Uh, for Erie County, I'm Erie County Executive Mark Polencars. Uh, I am joined by our Deputy County Executive Lisa Shamara, who you'll hear from. Uh, we're also joined by our Sheriff, uh, John Garcia, as well as the Under Sheriff, William Cooley. Uh, we are also joined by our Director of EEO, James Blackwell, who's been in charge and running with others uh, and answering phones, our 858 Snow phone number, uh, to talk a little bit about the experiences that our, our call takers, who are often pretty much members of my staff, have been dealing with and the stories they've heard. We're also joined by the Commissioner of the Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, Dan Nevers, Jr., as well as the Commissioner of the Department of Public Works, Bill Geary, Jr., a couple juniors there. Uh, power outages, uh, as of approximately uh, 40 minutes ago, uh, NYSEG had no power outages in Erie County. National Grid had 840. Uh, very important information to get out to the public. If you had power outage for greater for 72 hours or greater, New York State law requires the power companies to reimburse you for the spoilage of food or prescription medications. Uh, so if your power was out for 72 hours or more, you have the ability to seek reimbursement from either National Grid or NYSEG, which is credited to your bill uh, for the spoilage of food and or medications that you paid for. Uh, it's very important. You must seek reimbursement within 14 days of the 72-hour period. So basically, in the next 12 to uh, four, or about 12 days or so, you have to seek reimbursement. Both NYSIG and National Grid have websites where you can file a claim. Uh, you can just type in NYSIG food reimbursement, National Grid food prescription medication reimbursement. It'll take you to the link. But there are phone numbers you can call too. So I will uh, repeat these. Uh, I will say them once and repeat them. Uh, NYSIG's phone number is 866-577-3789. Press option three. Once again, for NYSEG and the food spoilage or prescription drug uh, reimbursement, it is 866-577-3787. Press option three. And for National Grid, it is 315-428-3370. Once again, that's 315-428-3370. Uh, so the, the power outages are down to less than 1,000. I talked to the president of National Grid's regional office, Ken Kujawa, this morning. Uh, they're hoping that they would have about 95% of that 840 done by the end of today. So they're shooting for 100%, but they, they're, they're, right now they think they'll have at least 95%, and they're shooting for 100% restored today. Uh, EMS task force. We know that during the height of the storm, uh, unfortunately, all emergency services had to be shut down, and it was very difficult to get across and through the city of Buffalo. Good news, good news. Uh, of course, it's going strong with continued advanced life support, 911 calls, as well as other basic services are being responded to. Uh, I also want to know or a note that the EMS task force is going door to door doing wellness checks at locations of calls they could not get to during the blizzard. So if it came into the 911 call center and uh, it, it's determined that they could not get there, they're doing wellness checks at those locations. And also, this is a very important thing because I think people are going to be a little surprised when a member of the National Guard walks up and knocks on their door because the National Guard started a mission today at 930 in which they are going door to door to do wellness checks in the neighborhoods that lost power every house. So if your neighborhood lost power, you're going to see a member of the National Guard over starting now through the next 48 hours who's going to knock on your door. Is everybody okay? Was there any issues that need, is anybody sick? Things like that. Uh, because we are fearful that there are individuals who may have perished living alone or two people who are not doing well in, a, in an establishment, especially those that still don't have power. But uh, it's, it, I think it's important. This is going to happen in the city and the suburbs. So any place that lost power, the National Guard is going to come down. Uh, and then also, 
every single person who called the 858 snow number will be getting a follow-up to ensure that they are well. Uh, okay, there's something reading on the board here. Uh, extended, oh, extended power loss. So if you had lost power for 10 minutes, you're probably not going to, and your neighborhood's not going to have it. But if you were one of those neighborhoods that had extended power loss, they will be walking to your door. And then once again, uh, National Guard will be re responding and calling every single person who called our 858 snow number. We'll be getting a follow-up to ensure that all is well. Uh, I have a lot of important information on snow removal in the city of Buffalo. Much progress has been made. We uh, believe, based on information, uh, that 65% of all city streets have at least one lane available for passage. Uh, there is a very large contingent of New York State Department of Transportation, Erie County Department of Transportation, the city of Buffalo, DPW, working as a task force that's staging out of Buffalo State College to clear uh, all the main roads and ensure that every city road has at least one lane open for emergency travel by the end of the day. New York State has 160 pieces of equipment that we're aware of. Uh, Erie County actually has more. <laughs> we have 72 uh, high lifts and 119 dump trucks available at our, that we are using between the county's crews and our contractors. Uh, Erie County is responsible for clearing every street from the Chicawaga line on Broadway all the way down Broadway to the waterfront and south. The county has taken over those operations. So we are responsible for clearing every street in South District and parts of Lovejoy, Fillmore, and the Ellicott districts. And uh, I'm going to turn over to Bill Geary right now as we talk about this because uh, he believes that we will have a lane open in all pair areas that the county is responsible for by 7 p.m. tonight. So, Billy, you want to talk more while we're talking yes, about this? Yeah, and uh, good, good morning, good afternoon, whatever. I lost track of time, but it's been a long couple of days. Um, so, to clarify on the county executive, uh, the crews, we've had uh, since Christmas Eve 12 loaders, normally in an area that we have no responsibility for, making sure that the major routes into the hospital central district on Oak and Elm, as well as all the way to High Street, had a pass for emergency vehicles, especially the ambulance, critical care transport. Um, typically, we're not involved. Our, our area of responsibility usually ends at the city line. We have, like I said, since uh, the 24th, we have plussed up to the numbers uh, 79 loaders and 119 dump trucks from 12 pieces of equipment to keep everything for operations for our sheriff's department, making sure the holding center was always accessible for its staff, as well as any critical transport. Our goal, and we will meet that goal tonight, our deadline is a hard number of 7 p.m. All the major arterials are almost um, two lanes, and if not, they will be two lanes by 7 p.m. The contractors have 100 MPs working two shifts with our contractors that have been working around the clock for traffic control safety. And I emphasize it is traffic control safety because there is a driving ban. We still have unnecessary travel, and it is a dangerous situation. We understand that people need to walk to get food. Those people that are out there, the military police that came in to help out with this traffic control, are there to help safe passage in and around these heavy pieces of equipment. It got to the point that just two minutes before this press conference, we had to pull off some of the major arterials that we could have opened even further, but now are in some of the side streets pushing snow just because there's less traffic on those roads. However, with all those challenges, it is very confident that we will meet the 7 p.m. deadline in our area of responsibility. Thank you, William. Uh, and just to tell you, I almost got hit this morning trying to get into my vehicle. Uh, and I'll tell you, I, there's a big snow bank. I haven't, my driveway hasn't been touched. That's fine. We deal with it. And I'm hopping over to look to my left. Cars parked on the street. Look to my left. Don't see anything. No lights. Hop over the snowbank. Boom. Car drives by with no lights on. If I'd taken a couple steps more, I would have probably be a fatality today. And then as I'm driving in, it's the overnight. It's around 6.15 or whatever. What, not 6.15, 7.15. It was dark. I saw another car without its lights on. First off, they probably shouldn't even be in the city driving. And... I just, I don't understand it anymore. I really don't understand why sometimes people put themselves and others in 
risky situations. But those are the things that we're dealing with. Simple as that. Uh, I just want to note that we've had people question and say, do you have county resources? Do you have enough resources? Our Department of Public Works on an annual basis buys five brand new uh, dump trucks and plows. Uh, they cost a quarter of a million dollars a piece. And we've been rotating these through over the last 10 years, so we've replaced every piece of equipment. Why do we do that? Because if you don't pe replace your pieces of equipment, they break down. And uh, when I came in as county executive, we were having tremendous breakdowns of equipment because it was all bought at once uh, back in the Giambra administration. And so we annually we will buy five pieces of uh, giant plows uh, with uh, the giant trucks with the, that are dump capability as well as uh, can be used for snow plowing. Uh, and it costs about a quarter million dollars a piece for each of these trucks. We're spending $1.25 million annually uh, to ensure that we get five brand new trucks because we have five districts. We always get a brand new truck every year. Uh, so we have the resources. We put them out there. We had the equipment. And as we talk about now, we have 72 high lifts and 119 dump trucks in the city of Buffalo in a place we normally don't have the responsibility for doing any roads because we're going to get the city open. And so is the state. And, the, of course, the city is working too. Uh, there's a major operation that's going out of Buffalo State College. That's the staging point for the state. Uh, and, and other equipment that's come in. And uh, it's, uh, it's still, it's a dangerous situation out there, as, as Bill noted. If you're walking along and you have these giant high lifts, they might not be able to see you. That's why the military police are there. They're not. They're not ticketed. Military police are not ticketed. I said yesterday the military police came in for traffic control. They are not ticketing. They are providing traffic control so that people don't get hit and we can control the vehicles that come in to the area and prevent an accident from occurring. Uh, I do want to note that uh, there is, of course, the towed car website for the county of which there uh, is online at erie.gov slash towed cars. Uh, you can pick up your vehicle in the lots that are identified if you come with your key fob or your key. Uh, there may be some vehicles that are damaged, uh, so they may not actually be available to drive out. But if your vehicle is at one of the county lots that's listed on erie.gov slash towed vehicles, you have your key fob, you see your vehicle there, with the, it's got the, the make, model, and license plate number. If you see your vehicle there, you can pick it up as long as it's drivable. Uh, and uh, the county is not charging people for the costs associated with towing, which is fairly substantial. Uh, we I also have on a link for the town of Amherst and the town of Chikawaga's separate sites, which are not controlled by us, but we do have a link so you can check their sites. Uh, I do want to move on to fatalities. Unfortunately, we can confirm from the Erie County Department of Health there have been 34 fatalities. Uh, we have additional fatalities since the ones we announced yesterday. We have confirmed that 26 of the Individuals were recovered in the city of Buffalo. Seven were recovered in the suburbs uh, between Chicawaga, Depew, and Amherst. And one is unknown. We're still trying to uh, determine where that uh, individual is found. So we have an increase of the fatalities. There are now 34 fatalities confirmed for Erie County, of which 26 are in Buffalo. Seven were in Amherst, Chicawaga, and Depew combined, and one that's unknown. Uh, we unfortunately have to say that of the 34, there are two John Does and one Jane Doe. If you have a loved one who's missing, we ask you to call local police department. So there are three individuals that the medical examiner's office has, two John Does and one Jane Doe, who unfortunately we have not been able to identify. And uh, we are asking you if you have a loved one that you are know, know is missing, please contact your local police department uh, to try to make a determination and help us identify these three individuals. Uh, with that, I am going to turn it over to our sheriff's office, uh, Sheriff uh, John Garcia and Under Sheriff William Cooley. Of course, they've been, all the sheriff's officers and deputies have been working nonstop since the beginning of the storm. And uh, once again, I just want to give a tremendous shout out to all our friends in law enforcement, including the sheriff's office as well as first responders, 911 call takers, public works employees, hospital workers, those of that were in urgent care that are open, our friends at the National Weather Service. Uh, to 
just uh, you've done incredible work and you've saved lives. And it's been a horrible storm with too many deaths, but we know without the work of these first responders and others, more people would have died. Thank you. Thank you, County Executive. Uh, I'll just summarize our uh, operations. Um, in about an hour, I think our uh, flight crew will be going up again. It's Sean Young and Ryan Rogers. So they'll be up in Air One providing real-time uh, surveillance intelligence and video uh, surveillance images that they uh, then relate to uh, Bill Gary and crew so that they can uh, direct their response uh, in the city. Um, I'm happy to report our patrol response has, uh, has normalized. Um, so the 18 towns and villages that we cover were now responded to all 9-11 uh, complaints there in, uh, um, in, in a short period of time. So um, on the other side, uh, the med runs continue, the dialysis runs continue. And we're still assisting with uh, getting essential personnel into uh, the, their places of employment, uh, you know, hospitals and uh, the youth detention center, uh, jail management facilities and such. Um, these are uh, big undertakings. Uh, quite often uh, with respect to the dialysis runs, you're talking about people that are, are both in, uh, in, infirmed and, uh, and disabled. So uh, uh, Commissioner Gary was uh, able to equip us with some stone removal equipment. So when we get to these houses where people can't ambulate, um, we're able to dig out and get in and get them to their necessary uh, medical appointments. So we appreciate that greatly. Um, Sheriff, any words? Thank you, Under Sheriff. Uh, so when this bomb hit, it, it hit the North Towns and it hit it hard. And I just have to commend the North Towns, Grand Island, Amherst, uh, Cheektowaga, Tonawanda, Clarence, Newstead. The, uh, uh, the people did great, great work there from their uh, Department of Public Works to uh, the law enforcement. It, as the undersheriff said, we, we cover, the Erie County Sheriff's Office covers 18 towns, villages, and Native American territories. It's approximately half uh, the area of Erie County and uh, just over a third of the population. Um, I'm glad and I'm proud to report that we've had zero fatalities and we've had a lot of people stranded out there and it, it wasn't because of luck that we had zero fatalities. We had our chiefs boots on the ground out there. None of them are, as we say in law enforcement, house cats. They were out there on the ground getting real time information back to our deputies, our citizens that assisted us. And, and listen, I know there's stories about looting going on in the city of Buffalo and so forth, but nine out of 10 stories are gonna be great stories that are gonna come out of this. We, we've had so many citizens that stepped up with their, uh, with their plows, with their snowmobiles in assisting us. We had off-duty sheriff's deputies that went around the clock with their own plows and assisted the deputies to get through. As the undersheriff said, Bill Gary's crews would open a path and we got there. We found ways to make it happen. And we found ways to make it happen because we were out on the road. We have to get better. We need better equipment. Um, obviously, uh, there's gonna be um, some grants that we're gonna look into because these UTVs came in very handy. And with those UTVs, we also need the trailers to transport them to different places. But we did a lot of work in the city of Buffalo, and, and we still are. 90% of our dialysis runs are in the city of Buffalo. And there were a lot of rescues in the city of Buffalo, and there's a lot of great stories. And I know that Under Sheriff Cooley is very humble, but uh, he and um, Chief Ritzelero went over to Lovejoy and uh, rescued two people that were freezing. And they were, you know, on the spectrum. Uh, Under Sheriff Cooley took them home, and uh, they were with him and, and the Cooley family over Christmas. Uh, his wife Renee uh, grabbed some of the uh, gifts that Santa had brought for his kids and uh, gave them out there. And these are the great stories. So yeah, there is looting, and it's despicable, and it's taken away resources from City of Buffalo Police that could be going around and as the county executive said, with the National Guard checking on people and seeing how they're doing. But you know, there's always gonna be those opportunistic criminals. But folks in Erie County, we're good people. We've done a great job. 
We should be very proud of what accomplishments uh, we made during a weather system that's, there was a word bomb in it. So listen, zero visibility, it was terrible conditions. The Erie County Sheriff's Office, Office was still out. We have to do an after uh, incident report. And um, there was planning ahead throughout the whole year. Chief Carney from Patrol told us, Sheriff, we need all our deputies to have take home vehicles. And they came in so handy. Our deputies did not have to go to a central location. They went right on the road and a lot of them volunteered. And I, I you know, thank you so much. I spoke to the uh, people in dispatch, our dispatch. And I know everybody got a call from a loved one, a friend, a neighbor, desperate, help me please. Now just imagine that times 48 hours and hundreds of calls. I spoke to one of our, our women there and I won't name her name, but you know, she broke down in tears when I said thank you. And she said, you don't, you don't have to thank me. That's what we do. And that's what everyone has said. But again, I wanna say thank you to the dispatchers, the deputies, our jail management division. We actually took in people in Alden that were stranded on the road and they were fed. They, they had a warming station. There's so many great stories. So don't get caught up folks on the looting and everything else because there's always gonna be that criminal element. There's many more great stories than bad stories. And again, I wanna say thank you to Bill Geary. I wanna say thank you to Dan Neverett. Mr. Mayor, thank you. And I'm sure your dad's so proud, a former Erie County Sheriff's Deputy. And I wanna thank uh, the county executive. And uh, folks, hang in there and um, we'll, we'll get this done. God bless everybody. Thank you, Sheriff. <clears throat> uh, it's warming up out there. <clears throat> Snow's starting to melt a little bit and we're expecting actually a rapid melt over the next two days because we're gonna hit 50 degrees and we are preparing with the state for the possibility of flooding, including ice jam flooding on some of the creeks. I'd like to turn over to our Commissioner of Homeland Security and Emergency Services, Dan Never Jr. to talk about the next phase. Well, good morning. And uh, again, I, I wanna thank all of our partners with the Sheriff's Office, everybody that has been actively engaged here, the dispatchers, you hear a lot of thank yous because unfortunately um, we've gotten to the position now and the, to the point of this disaster where um, a lot of the stuff and a lot of the positive things have become thankless positions. And I, and I thank you for reiterating all of the positives and, and like you said, the cream will rise to the top and did during the course of this. I, I also wanna add to this whole thing that when we're talking about disasters, it, you, you can talk about equipment, you can talk about pre-positioning of things, the number one most critical resource that we have is communications. It's the ability to reach out and to talk to the person next to you that can assist you. So it's the Sheriff's Office, it's the Department of Public Works, it's the state, it's the National Guard. We should point out, they become such a critical resource to us here, but they can't be here because they have certain protocols that they have to go through in order to appear on television or do radio interviews. They're active, they're here, they're on the streets. As far as uh, our job here, like they say, is, but, you know, um, no rest for the weary. We're also focused on the potentials for uh, a rapid melt. We've consulted with the National Weather Service. We are focused uh, with regards to the potential for flooding, but we feel very comfortable. We've had a great conversation with the governor's office. We've also talked with the Homeland Security and emergency services from the state. We have an ample supply ready to go, ready to be deployed with personnel in the event that we we have some type of flooding, but we feel very comfortable. We've put a, uh, a request in, Air One will be flying just to take a look to see if there's any potential for ice jam flooding. But we have already reached out to the communities, talked to the elected officials, talked to the emergency managers, just to make sure if they have a need, if they want something pre-deployed, we'll pre-deploy it. But right now, the best place for that equipment is in the warehouse where it's ready to go, then we feel very comfortable with regards to that. Uh, I did want to touch base too on some of the things that happened throughout, throughout the course of this, especially we hear about the task force and the EMS task force. When there was zero solution for EMS calls being responded to, the task force here in this building got together. That task force, our privates, AMR Ambulance, Twin City Ambulance, we had New York State EMS here, we had County EMS here, we had volunteers from around the outer rings 
that work together. And I should also say the medical direction, the doctors from ECMC and the medical directors of all of these agencies, and even in Albany at the state level, that came and said, normally we can't do this, but guess what we're going to do this today? We started with one task force. We now have multiple task forces. No call will go unanswered because of the fine efforts that everybody did on that end with the EMS task force. So I want to thank each and every one of them who worked days without sleep to get this done, to make sure as soon as we could get into areas where there were critical care, and even now where we're working our way down the list where there might have been a 911 call or a uh, 858 snow call, every call will go answered. Uh, we might not like the answers that were when we make those contacts, but certainly I do want to mention that because these are the things that are going on behind the scenes that you may not hear about. Maybe there's not enough time in a 15 second clip, but I do want to tell you that there is a lot of positive things going on, a lot of moving parts, and hopefully as we move on, all of those positive stories will come forward. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, the uh, Emergency Operations Center, of course, was the nerve center for the response for a blizzard the blizzard of 22 that was paralyzing, that, that was a, a, a severe blizzard, as I talked about yesterday during with some media. A normal blizzard is very bad. It's, a, it's really bad. 35 mile per hour wind gusts for three hours straight with less than a quarter mile visibility. This was an extreme blizzard, maybe the category five of blizzards that can be done because it was 70 miles per hour hurricane force winds for 24 hours with no visibility, just a few feet. And we were the nerve center here, but we had our staff from Erie County working at home. Our 858 snow number, almost every one of the calls that was received for that was received at someone's house. We had it set up through laptops and cell phones that our employees who could not get here would answer the phone calls from their house. So there were people who were working in the overnight hours and the regular hours taking these calls, and the calls were incredible. Uh, James Blackwell is our uh, director of the Equal Employment Opportunity Office for Erie County. When a disaster comes, you work out a title. James was one of those who was coordinating the calls and actually answering them. Uh, and I just want to give James an opportunity to come up to talk a little bit about the experience of himself and others, uh, which uh, are other call takers who were dealing with individuals who thought they were going to die. And uh, I just want to commend every single one of the members of my staff who worked on the 858 snow number uh, because that's not a permanent number we have. We bring that up for emergency situations and my staff members are the ones that are manning the call and they did an incredible job in a very difficult circumstance. So James. Uh, thank you, Mr. County Executive. Um, this was probably one of the more difficult weeks um, that I have ever personally experienced. Um, pretty much the day leading up to, and the days leading up to, quite frankly, uh, the snowstorm, we knew that it was going to be a, uh, a devastating snowstorm. Um, the extent to which uh, I think it definitely exceeded my, um, my expectations. Um, and so as we, as the snowstorm came in, it quickly became apparent to the county executive and, and leadership that uh, we were going to have to offer some additional supports for the residents of Erie County. And we quickly um, staffed and stood up a, uh, a call center, which for, for individuals who certainly are not uh, trained in dispatch related emergencies, um, I don't even know, I can't even give you the days that we, we started. I think it was like Friday or, or Thursday. Uh, pretty much straight through 24-7, answering calls, triaging, doing the best that we can do um, to, to meet the needs of residents in Erie County. Um, initially, um, those calls consisted of uh, people in dire need, people trapped in their vehicles, trapped in their their houses, wondering what to do. People were scared. Um, and that, that, was, that was very difficult. Um, I'm proud of the work that, that our team did. Um, I'm proud of the work that, uh, that the county executive and, and leaders up here have done. Um, I, I don't want to get into the specifics of, of those calls that we were taking. 
Um, but they range from really everything. Um, and now that we are kind of in a different phase of the snowstorm, um, there are still really important issues that residents have, and we are still receiving phone calls about everything. And so while our team continues to take these phone calls from the 858 snow number, um, I, I just want to stress the, the importance of the 858 snow number is really for urgent matters. Um, you know, it, it's very difficult to go from somebody who is experiencing the worst time of their life uh, to getting into an argument with someone about a snow ban. Um, it, that, that, that's a very uh, difficult switch, and that is one that the call center is not designed for. So um, please keep that in mind. Right? Uh, the snow plows are doing the best they can do to clear the roads, and sometimes that might mean that your driveway gets blocked by snow. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. That's I mean, that's tough, right? But first responders have to be able to respond to these calls for people, right? There are more important things going on right now, more urgent things going on right now than what may or may not happen if your road does, or if your driveway does not get plowed. Um, so I, I just ask that moving forward, um, individuals, please keep that in mind. Um, certainly tune in, follow the county executive on social media. He is very informative and offers of what the plans are and, and everything. We might not have all that information, right? Our job with 858 Snow is simply to handle urgent matters, get them in the capable hands the, where the strategy will be presented and then executed. Thank you. Thank you, James. And, and I am proud of you and what the team did. I know it was very difficult and we had to actually move some people off because of the severity of, and, and the seriousness of the calls. And when you're talking to people for continual hours who think they're going to die, it reminds me very similar of the beginning of the COVID crisis when we set up our COVID hotline and people were calling just crying. I have a cough. Does that mean I'm going to die? And we had individuals working in those call centers who weren't trained for that. And it was a very, it was a very mentally exhausting uh, task. And I just want to thank each and every one of the individuals from my team and from the Erie County team who are manning those calls. And I'm very proud of what you did. You have saved lives. Finally, I want to turn it over to our, uh, our Deputy County Executive, Lisa Shamara, to, to offer some perspective. Uh, Lisa's jumped into the frying pan way from the frying pan straight into the fire. It's not that long ago she was a legislator and uh, came on board and was here, I think the first week or the second week was the storm in November. And uh, we had her here to learn more about her operations and how they go. And she's been here every day during the storm uh, uh, doing uh, incredible work. And I know she's got some perspective she wants to talk about. So Deputy County Executive. Uh, thank you. Um, I am incredibly proud to be part of this team and I, I jumped into this um, not knowing what to expect during major storms but I have to tell you I have been incredibly impressed first of all with um, the leadership of our county executive I it is amazing because the management of the EOC and so many individuals who are coming together to do great work um, takes great organization great leadership um, I have been humbled by the work that has been done here. Um, lives have been saved, and um, it has taken a, a team to make that happen. But um, and there have been a lot of thanks given uh, during this this press conference today. But I want to talk to the people of Erie County because you have been part of the solution in helping us get through this horrendous blizzard, a blizzard that will be down in our history books forever. Um, you have been great neighbors. You have taken in strangers who were in need. Um, the stories I have heard have brought me to tears. And, and quite frankly, um, 
Commissioner Navarrete, you are right. We are going to hear story after story about the city of Good Neighbors. And I want to thank all of those people who, at a time when we should have been celebrating with our families and our friends, we were helping each other through this incredible event. And thank you to all of the people who have gone above and beyond, who have shoveled, who have delivered food, who have helped their neighbors, who have helped strangers who have been stranded, because that is what's going to get us through all of this. And there will be a time when we can celebrate with family and friends and friends that we've met through this horrendous event. Um, so thank you to those residents. You are and continue to be part of the solution in getting us through this. Um, and we are in this together and we are the city of good neighbors. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, we are uh, I would hope in a position that within the next uh, 24 hours that every street in the city of Buffalo will have had at least one lane open. We know the county's portion of it that is applicable from Broadway, from the Cheektowaga line all the way to the waterfront downtown uh, south will have at least one lane open uh, by 7 p.m. tonight and most of the mains will be uh, two lanes at least. And uh, I just want to once again thank everyone, including the people of our community, for your incredible work to save lives. I've been reading some of these stories of the life-saving things that people have done, uh, the, the tragic stories of the losses of individuals in our community, and it is heartbreaking. It's a gut punch. 2022 has been a horrible year for our community in so many different ways. I can't wait till 2023 starts, to tell you the truth. Uh, and I think we all feel the same way. Uh, and. Uh, Karma owes us. Karma owes us big time next year for this community. So go Bills. Uh, with that, I'll, we'll open up to questions. If you are uh, have a question, please raise your hand as on the uh, uh, WebEx. Uh, the first question will go to, let me just make sure I have my volume up, uh, Ed Dranch of Channel 7. He was the first one to have his hand up. Ed. Hi, Mark. Good morning. I have two questions for you. Uh, can you give us an update potentially about the 33 and the 198? Uh, because we know that those two routes are closed, but for how much longer? And I know that there was a mention about crews trying to get out onto the 198. What are we looking at? Well, the crews are out removing vehicles and blowing snow as they move along on the 198. Same with the 33. They spent a couple days basically removing uh, vehicles on the 33. Kensington Expressway. One of the problems with the 33 is, of course, it has the lower grade section where it's under grade. And so the drifts weren't just five, seven foot drifts. They drifted all the way up the walls. There were 30 foot drifts. So they have to cut that back. They can't just like do one lane on the 33. They have to wait until all lanes are open and it's safe for traffic on what is basically an expressway. Uh, so the Department of Transportation for New York State is responsible for both the 33 and the 198. I would, uh, uh, turn, I would ask you to direct your question to the DOT uh, for a more specific time on when uh, they may open, but I would remind everybody there's a driving ban in the city of Buffalo. So uh, I, I really don't think they're going to be open until the driving ban is lifted. And, and I can tell you right now that the driving ban will not be lifted in the city of Buffalo today. The goal is to get it open every street one lane by 9 a.m. in the morning. That's the goal from the state, the city, and the county now. We believe we'll have one lane open for our section from Broadway South uh, to the Lackawanna line for the city of Buffalo by 7 p.m. today. But there's still a driving ban. Please adhere to it. Uh, Mark, my second question, uh, if you would, um, can you talk to me about the coordination here? We see your partners with the county government lined up behind you. Uh, we know that you've been holding news updates with the state as well. Yesterday in particular, there was uh, a city press conference while there was a county update. We were told that the city's press schedule is irrelevant to the counties. I'm also wondering what the coordination is between Erie County and other municipalities in Erie County, Amherst, Chittawaga, Tonawanda, um, especially when it comes to people finding their cars. Why isn't there one central database and why is each municipality then responsible for helping folks find their car instead of putting it all in one spot? Uh we have an elected officials call every morning. We had one this morning again uh, with leadership from all of the municipalities. Uh, the city of Buffalo was not on it today. They generally have not been on it. I'm serious. I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. 
the issues with coordination i there's a reason why the state and the county have come in and taken over operations i know the mayor's not going to be happy to hear it but we took over an entire segment one third of the city of buffalo because we know that we could get in there and clean it very quickly the state is basically doing the same thing with equipment from other areas uh, i've already had discussions with my staff about what it would take for the county to take over all snow uh, snow cleaning operations in the future uh, and now i've had that discussion with new york state as well because i think it's apparent that it's time for it to happen or at least a discussion on the future mayor's not going to be happy to hear about it but storm after storm after storm after storm the city unfortunately is the last one to be opened and that shouldn't be the case it's embarrassing to tell the truth and that's why so we're going to continue to work on it and i'm going to go on to the next question uh, uh we have a, the next hand was raised by dominic lavallo of uh, spectrum and then dave mckinley of channel two hey mark uh so obviously a big part of that is your hope is to have buffalo open possibly by 9 a.m tomorrow oh uh that said there with the driving ban going on uh for several days now uh people will need prescriptions people will need food um is getting food going to a grocery store considered essential travel and if not people who are in the situation of needing prescriptions needing food is there a service that they can call or is provided so they can get the necessary resources uh, we understand the predicament that people are in. Our goal, our goal is to keep as many vehicles off the streets. We don't want people to go without prescriptions. You can call 858-SNOW if there are prescriptions that need to be delivered. Uh, we know that people are running out of food. Uh, we do know we are delivering MREs and water to warming centers uh, that are in the city of Buffalo. I, I, I'm afraid of what might happen if we said go ahead and go to the grocery store and drive because then we'll have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of vehicles driving in areas that really you, we, we can't handle uh, because of the issues with snow because there's giant piles that are being moved onto streets to then be picked up by dump trucks. It's, it's still not safe in that situation. Uh, I would suggest that uh, uh, individuals uh, reach out to neighbors if they can't drive uh, find uh, uh, ways of, of us if there are ways that we, we are you know I know people want to replenish their stock there's a reason why we deliver MREs to keep people help and feed them uh, I, I, I just avoiding the situation where we have possibly tens of thousands of people trying to get on the road uh, at a time when we, we just don't have the capability of handling that traffic and then it's a standstill as Bill noted earlier, in one of the sections that we were responsible for, we were trying to clear one of the mains for two lanes, and we had to pull off the heavy equipment because it was too dangerous uh, to be there with the people that were walking in the vehicles that were driving, so we moved to side streets where we could easily, more easily do the work. And, and if, if more vehicles get on the road, it's just going to hamper our efforts. Uh, Dave McKinley, Channel 2. David, are you, you need to unmute your phone. Oh, hi there. Can I can, okay? Yes, I can. Go ahead, Dave. Okay, yeah, first time, long time. Uh, look, uh, I, want, I want to ask you about your intriguing idea you just mentioned about Long City Street. But first, I, I'd like to ask you about something that just won't go away now that we've had a few days and you've been clarified. There are people still wondering, Buffalo Bills played, they landed in Rochester, they were allowed to travel during the travel ban. And they were not allowed to travel. They were not well, allowed to travel. They did. They, they did. Oh, I understand that. They actually reached out to Erie County for, in the sheriff's office for an escort, and we said, no, there's a driving ban. And at that time, it was actually heavy snow still. I don't want anybody to think that Erie County gave preferential treatment to the bills. I'm glad that they landed in Rochester, but there was not preferential treatment given to the football team. I want to put that out there right now because I know they reached out to the sheriff's office, and the sheriff's office said, no, we are not going to give you an escort. There's a driving ban going on. Sheriff's deputies are responding to life-threatening situations, and we're not going to do an escort for the football team. Simple as that. And, and they weren't considered essential workers? That no, they were not. As much as, as much as they're essential for our mental health when they win, they are not essential workers. Now, if they want to, if they've got capability to drive CDL licenses and things like that, and they want to get behind a rig, 
we'll, we'll bring them on. We'll take them on. I know. I don't know. If Josh, you know, those guys want to start shoveling driveways, go ahead. Be my guest. Uh, but they're not. They're not. The bills are not considered essential workers. Uh, and I, I, I think it's important that people understand that we gave them no, uh, no, no free treatment. Okay. And, and this, this idea you just brought up, just to, are you talking about a complete takeover? And practically, how would that work? Would you just take all their equipment? Or would we're, you we're, buy this is a discussion we'll have. And I think it's going to be certainly something that we need to when we have these major storms consider, such that the county and others are, are responsible for districts inside the city of Buffalo when we, it's, I'm not going to do it when we, and I don't think it's appropriate if there's one inch of snow on the ground. But if we have these major storms, we're, we're going to have to come in there and, and we know we're going to have to do this because uh, we have the capability, we have the money and uh, we can afford to hire the contractors and uh, we have the capability. We have the emergency operations center. I don't do not believe the city has ever had an emergency operations center open during this event nor the last one, uh, and uh, we, will, uh, we will do what it takes in the future to ensure that our community is open as quickly as possible. And if that means we've got to hire more trucks and get more contractors and bring in more people to handle an area that the Erie County has never been responsible for, we'll do it. I just don't want to see this anymore. I'm sick of it. I'm a city resident myself. I live in the city of Buffalo, and it pains me to see the other 25 towns in two small cities open in times when the city isn't. The city has its own problems that are different than the smaller communities because of the size of the streets and the parking issues. I understand that. But we have more capability than the city. And if we have to, working with the state, we will find a way to get through these storms quicker by taking over operations if need be. I know the mayor's probably not thrilled to hear it. I don't care anymore. I want it done. Uh, I think the next hand up was Kelly Holland. Kelly, you need to meet. Hi, County Executive. Um, it, it appears that um, games for the Sabres, the Bandits, um, are still scheduled uh, to go on for the next few days. Uh, yes. Will you guys be in talks if the, the driving ban is lifted to have those, you know, be teams only, no fans? Or uh, once that driving ban is lifted, will downtown be equipped to handle an influx of people for games and then first night? Uh, I can't speak on behalf of first night. I don't know what that city runs first night. Uh, the, we are monitoring. Uh, we know the Sabres have a game, I think, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, if the driving ban is still in effect, of course, there would be no game. Well, they could hold the game. If they, if the airport is going to be open. If the team came in, they could hold the game, but there would be nobody that should be driving down to attend the game. Uh, if the driving ban is lifted and there's parking available, then yes, I guess they would play the game and people would attend. Uh, you, when you drive, you lift the driving ban, that means it's safe enough to do these types of activities. But I can't, all I can say is I know the driving ban is going to be in effect through the remainder of today. Uh, ben Tijimoto. I know it's still kind of early, but do you have any data in terms of, you know, the deaths or the power outages, whether they affected any area more than others? Uh, well, I do know with the deaths, I don't know if I, I don't, I'm not certain if I said it earlier. Uh, 26 individuals were located and found in the city of Buffalo. Seven, I did mention this, seven were suburbs, which included Amherst, Chicawaga, and Depew, and one is unknown. They're still trying to confirm the uh, location where and who brought it in. Uh, so uh, it definitely, with regards to deaths, it, it, it dramatically affected the city of Buffalo. I do know when it came to power outages, the vast majority of them were in the city of Buffalo. Uh, I'm glad that they've reduced the power outages to the level that they're at right now. It's tremendous work by all to do that. And especially considering we're talking about frozen substations where they were just flooded with snow and transformers froze. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, it was the city of Buffalo that seemed to get the brunt of not only the power outages, but um, more specifically and sadly, the deaths. I mean, more specifically within the city, was there a certain location of the city in which that you noticed these were happening? Uh, I, I do. There, there is. 
in the report that we get from the ME's office a breakdown of where the body was found. And uh, I just don't off the top of my head have a, a, a breakdown to be able to do that. But uh, eventually I think we'll be able to break it down probably by council districts. But I, I, I don't want to say anything that would cause that. And uh, uh, we have uh, the last question with his hand raised is Stephen Louie. Hey, County Executive. Uh, thank you very much. I had a question on the decision making um, behind instituting the travel ban uh, on Friday morning. Can you kind of talk, talk us through the decision making process there? Was there any discussion of, of going earlier with that? And, and if so, why not? Uh, there's, there was discussion starting on Thursday once we declared the state of emergency would go in effect at 7 a.m. There was some initial thought that this ban would not reach our area until uh, 10 a.m. Uh, that, of course, changed when it hit around 8.30. There was also discussion about not doing it at 7 or before because we wanted third shift workers to be able to get home uh, at a time when we knew it was going to be rain, and it was rain. I mean, it dropped dramatically. The snow really went from rain to sleet to snow in a matter of less than five minutes, around 8.40, uh, and then it started snowing. It wasn't horrible at that point. Uh, we didn't really get the bad, bad uh, whiteouts until uh, right around 10 o'clock, uh, which of course was after the ban. Uh, but we, we have to take a lot into the consideration. if. Uh, if anyone's to be blamed, you can blame me. I'm the one who has to make the final call on behalf of the county. Uh, I've been reading some books lately when I had time. I was reading them when I had COVID and uh, on, on a number of things, including a, a biography on JFK. And uh, there's a famous quote from JFK following the Bay of Pigs, which is, uh, victory has 100 fathers defeat is an orphan, but someone has to bear responsibility. And if you want to bear anybody responsibility, bear me. I'll take it. I'm the one who has to sign the state of emergency. I'm the one who has to sign the order. Every mayor, every uh, supervisor can do the same. Uh, I was the first one to put the driving ban in effect at 930 to my knowledge. Uh, we announced it around 845 going effect at 930. But if uh, if, if people want to point the finger, I'll take it because I'm the one in this position that has to assume that responsibility and authority. And as Harry Truman says, the buck stops here. And uh, uh, we, we follow through. We talk to professionals. We talk to the state. We talk to our friends in law enforcement. Talk to the Weather Service. And if there's criticism that uh, it wasn't done right, well, I'll take it. I'll bear responsibility. Uh, Bill has to make a statement. I don't know what it is, but go ahead, Bill. <clears throat> no, I'd just, uh, again, like to clarify the use of the military police is to prevent any accidental death yes. in and around the operating um, equipment that is doing the snow removal operation. They are not to ticket people. Yes. I know there's a lot of confusion out there, you know, um, some, that these military police are in there. They are not. There are people that are traversing the roads because they have to possibly get to get some food, gas, whatever it may be. They are there to protect the safety of those individuals as well as the people that are operating the equipment so there is no accidental deaths. Thank you, William. Uh, yesterday in the press conference, I did note that the military police and New York State Police would have used for traffic control uh, and also to help prevent looting. Uh, I, I did not say yesterday they were there to ticket. Unfortunately, uh, it was put on social media from uh, one of my team that it was traffic control and ticketing. We're not there to ticket. We don't want to ticket people at this point. We, we could ticket people and charge them for the costs associated with towing their vehicles. We're not. County's absorbing it, so I want people to understand that. Uh, with that, uh, with no, I see no other hands raised by uh, our reporters. I want to thank all the team here from Erie County for the great work. Uh, we have gone through the uh, great blizzard of 2000. 22 people are calling it the Christmas blizzard already uh, and it is devastating paralyzing it has taken 34 of our fellow citizens I offer my deepest condolences and sympathies to the individuals who've lost loved ones at this holiday season it's just I mean it's terrible I understand it every time the Christmas season comes along people are going to remember the storm and the death of their loved ones and the stories are just heartbreaking 
just heartbreaking. Uh, Abdul Sharif, who went out to get food and provisions for his pregnant wife, who's about to give birth, and he didn't make it back home. Just, just, just terrible. And I just want to say to the people of Erie County, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the work that you did. I'm proud of how you responded. Many, many more lives were saved because of the work of our first responders, our law enforcement, everyone, including you at home for following and helping others. They call us the city good neighbors. We've proven that. And uh, we will recover. Thank you. Be safe and well.